Hey there, welcome back guys. Uh, just when I uh, I was cutting my logs, right? I figured out you guys probably wanna know how to edit your video in D-Log, right? Well, we've got you covered. Um, so basically, what you it's not what you think. Your videos are gonna go from looking like this to this. Which one do you like, this or this? So when shooting in D-Log, not D-Log, because D-Log I'm holding right here is going to be thrown into the fire pit later um, but it just you have more control of your footage and so just to make it easier for you to understand come let me show you let's go back to the studio anyway um so when i'm not cutting the logs sometimes i like to edit my footage in d-log and um it comes in handy you don't have to have a drone to to edit your footage in d-log so most cameras usually have the d-log setting like the camera i'm recording from actually allows you to record your footage in d-log and so basically um what d-log does is uh let's say it's sunny out 12 o'clock noon you get the, we get different lighting here different colors and um if you're moving your camera around let's say this camera or any camera um the lighting reflects differently off certain objects and the sh colors show differently and so when you shoot in D-Log, everything is just in one color. It's kind of like a monotone sepia, not sepia, but uh, uh, like sort of it's black and white, but it's not really black and white, but it's just one tone. And what this allows you to do is it uh, gives you the capability to edit your footage a little bit better by adding the colors so everything's just in sync because it's easier to go up, right, when everything uh, needs to be edited but it's harder to come back down from everything that's so bright. So what you do is you shoot in D-Log and then you edit your footage in post-production so that afterwards you'll get, you'll, you know, you can decide where you want the colors to pop more, to kick. But this is going to be a basic video to play with your settings. Like let's say if you have Final Cut Pro, um, I have another video that will show you how to do it with another application, but this one is for Final Cut Pro and by default they're there. And you have to choose the settings that are right for you. Because let's say if I take my glasses off, that blue is blue. And my glasses on, the blue is a little bit darker and there's more of a kick to it. So what might seem blue to you, you're like, what is he talking about? That's magenta. You know, so um, you're, you, you, the criticism you might get from your colors or your, your footage having been edited might not be the criticism you'll be looking for. Uh, you might get the yay, like, wow, that's awesome. Or like, I don't get it. Um, so, you know, um, you have to be open to that and um, you also have to be open to just adjusting it uh, to finding that, that midway point so that it's not overkill and overly saturated because you just don't want it to be too saturated. But, you know, you'll get just if it has you play with it. And, you know, some folks like that look. Some folks will be like, ah, you know, I don't care. Uh, you know, that's it. And again, you, you do what's right for you. If you're, if you're doing this for your pleasure, um, then, you know, as long as you love it, that's what matters. If you're doing it, uh, you know, for the audience or on a freelance level, then you have to be open to the criticism and go back, you know, and be like, oh my God, I, they're going to love it. Can't wait to show it to them. Then when they show it to them, they're like, uh, what is that? So you, know, you have to be, but if you're doing it for you, then, you know, have fun with it, post it and, you know, enjoy it and work your craft. So without any further ado, let's get started. Come, let's show you some of the just basics on bringing your video from this to this. Okay, come. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna open up Final Cut. We'll start it from scratch. Make sure you have enough memory uh, on your scratch disk wherever you decide to leave your default projects um, in Final Cut. It'll open up 10.7.1. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here, new project, okay? And this will be called D-Lock, okay? Uh, normally you want a new library, but the library is just going to start as a project. I believe there is enough room on my machine. Um, so knowing that and moving forward, I go to new, right? And I'm going to go to library. I'm going to call it D log. Okay. Uh, this will be saved in movies, but in this case, I'm probably going to save it to the, um, yeah, let's see, ah, onto the um, desktop for me. Uh, you know, there's no rhyme or reason on where you you, you want to save your footage to but for me i would choose uh the uh desktop which is right there okay save it moving forward so then for me what well, i don't know how you import your footage i just drop it right into the timeline and everything just goes right there 
okay? I'm just going to bring this out a little bit, make it bigger, since we don't really need to play with anything else. Um, I like to, that view, you decide the view. Uh, you can choose fit, fill, etc. Um, so on that note, moving forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the colors a little bit. So if you don't see the colors um, or see where I'm going, let me just activate this uh, so that you guys can follow along. See? All right. So this is your, this is where the video is. We have a top. We're not going to get into all the nitty gritty. I'm just going to just cover the basics. See right here? Right there. Um, and so as you can see, the footage looks great. It's not in color, semi-color. It's not in black and white. It's like just mid-tone, like it's just, which is fine. So you find the area, I think right about, I know where the colors start to kick in and pop. And so I find a point ah, right about there. I like this spot because I know that when these, when, when you're standing here, everything is true to form. So I know what colors to look for. Okay. Um, you, so you, this is my way. You find a way that works for, right for you because I know that the greens are going to be as true green as I can get them as long as they're here. And then I know that these purples, purplish, uh, whatever color that is. So I'm going to match these colors according to what I think I see and when I'm there and then everything else will just have to adjust. Now you can isolate color adjustments, but I'm, well, that's not this video. Okay. So um, you can choose from exposure we have here. So you bring it down a little bit. When you bring it down, that works on the shadows, but we don't want to darken it a little bit yet, okay? And then you can adjust it a little bit here. You have your shadows. See, bring in the shadows, but we're not going to do shadows yet. I'm um, just running it over with you. We have here, see right here, the mid-tones. Mid-tones you can work with a little bit, but I don't like to do any of that until I've done these saturation effects, okay? So you see them right here, saturation. So saturation, if you bring this down, see it makes it more delog, but we don't want that. So you can bring saturation up a little bit. See how the green's coming back? Kind of neat, huh? And then we can mess with the global, right? And global works fair. Global, oh, that's pretty good. But you don't remember if you do too much, that see it's oversaturated. So you just do little tones, a little, 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 little like a little dab, like a little, like a pretend you're salt bale. With, you know, and you can bring that down a little bit, the mid-tones, but and you can, you know, you can move it around and let's see, it's too much to do. That's too much, but you see how everything starts to kick, right? And then right about there, I think there is good. And then for here, right? The last one, which is the highlights, right? See highlights to sort of balance it for me that everyone has their own order to do these in. So for me, if I bring the highlights a little, little, little bit, not bad, huh? And now when we run through the fill, uh, footage, right? See, the skies are bluer. Everything just flows right through. Kind of neat, huh? And then I got to bring it back because I want to make some minor adjustments with the other levels. Um, so that's my point where I like to balance it from, okay? So everybody has their own, um, you know, where they own point, start point, right? And then everything else gets balanced from there. All right, knowing that and moving forward, now I got to bring this back to here, which is right there, right about there. Okay. See, kind of neat. So now you can do the exposure, right? So this is where you might want to work with the shadows a little bit. Remember, but if you work with the shadows too much, you're going to darken the footage and you don't want to darken it too much. Okay. And you just have to find that halfway point, that tad point, I call it, right? It's a tad. So that moved it a tad, 3% and even 1% um, could be just as good. Uh, it's too much right about there. That was a 1% minus one. And that's it. I'm going to leave it like this. I don't want to spend too much time over killing it, but you get the gist of it. Right. And, um, that is pretty much it. I, I think I'm comfortable with this. It's definitely better than where it was before. It, you know, came to life. We brought the colors in at one starting point so that everything just, you know, flows and fluctuates moving forward. Um, some people like to work with the sky, like, you know, uh, make the sky more blue, um, but that's a more of an isolated experience, but it still looks good. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is how you go from D log to the logs. All right. Anyway. You on my mind a lot. Don't need no time. Watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay needs you every day. You like my oxygen. Make it seem like the barge in them. Got my heart no barge in them. From the bed to the floor to the couch. Might wake the neighbors up. Break you in and break you out. In the end, we're gonna make a child.
Hit them, we gon' hit the show. Part two, we don't need no fouls. Misty, we gon' get tipsy, don't need a power shot. Copy my steel. Face the fact that ain't no cap, I'm real. Ain't no cap, I'm real. The plastic bars from a copy my steel. Copy my steel. Face the fact that ain't no cap, I'm real. Ain't no cap, I'm real. The plastic bars from a copy my steel. Got my heart no. As easy as I was going to say one, two, three, but not as much because it's a lot of, it's a balancing act. And, um, you know, some people work, you have to remember working with your brightness up so that you can actually not all the way, but just at a mid-tone level, because, um, most people I know have their computer brightness set to like 50%. There's some friends I have at 75 for me, I have it set all the way. Uh, it's just so I can get the true colors, but also your monitor. So for example, this monitor here, um, is going to give different colors from this monitor. So you want to make sure that um, whatever monitor you're working with has the um, has the capability to uh, reciprocate and and give off the colors you're trying to project. Because if I did it on here, I'm not going to. It's not going to be the images or colors I want to project. Project. If I do it here, I get a much more better experience. So remember that monitor comes into play too. But I don't want to get too much into it. You guys have fun with your footage. You figured it out. And now moving forward, um, that's it. Have fun. Anyway, I hope this video helped you in better understanding how the D-log works. We have the D-logs outside that I have to get back to cutting. But in the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. Or ideas for other videos. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. <laughs>